Hey folks, I'm Peter Melhorn. In this video, we're going to talk about five catfish baits that will catch catfish anywhere in the country. Well, folks, if you watch my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've put out a lot of videos on catfish bait. And you may ask yourself, why so many videos on catfish bait? Well, it's simply because that is probably one of the most talked about topics uh, from folks that are new to catching catfish. It is one of the biggest questions that everybody asks. People want to know what works, what doesn't work, what's good, what's bad, what can I use where I'm at. So I try to do some videos on these different topics just to give you guys a little more information for when you're heading out there to try to catch catfish. Now recently I've done some videos on using chicken, using strawberry jello chicken, even some videos on catfish baits to avoid. But this video is about five baits, no matter where you're at in the country, that will help you catch more catfish. Now bait number one that you need to pick up is some kind of worms, whether that be red worms or night crawlers, whatever kind of worms you've got in the area that you live, whatever you can go dig up in your flower bed those worms will catch catfish. Worms are a naturally occurring creature that frequently get washed into creeks and get washed in along the bank and catfish feed on them. The other cool thing is that a lot of other fish feed on worms also. So having this bait will not only help you catch catfish, but it will also help you catch some of the other baits that I'm gonna talk about later in this video. Now worms are relatively easy to hook. You can put a whole worm on your hook. You can put multiple worms on your hook. You can put a piece of a worm on the hook. You can fish them on the bottom. You can fish them underneath the bobber. They're very, very versatile and they're an excellent bait and they're readily available. That's the other cool thing. You can stop in at basically any bait and tackle store and they sell them. Uh, also a lot of Walmarts will carry these in their sporting goods department so you can pick them up there and you can dig them up in your yard. Now this next bait is something that you can catch with those red worms and that is using sunfish, bluegill, brim, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they get referred to by a couple of different names. The technical name is sunfish and that refers to a family of fish uh, that most of us started out catching as a kid. Uh, a nickname for them is brim, and a lot of people throw the generic name bluegill to apply to all of them. Uh, but there are a lot of these little small fish that you probably caught off a pier or in a local pond, and they make excellent catfish bait. The great thing about bluegill is they're a hardy fish. You can put them in a live well, uh, even a basic live well, just a bubbler in a bucket, and they will stay alive for a long, long time. This is great if you're out there fishing in the summertime and you want to have the freshest bait, especially if you want to use them alive. And this brings me to a point about bluegill. They make excellent live bait. We use them to catch big flatheads with, uh, and these live bluegill channel catfish will also hit. But the other cool thing is, say you fish with them for a while, they get hit by some fish, they die, you can use them as cut bait also. The heads and the midsections and the fillets all are excellent bait for catfish. So you can take the worms that you were using to catch catfish with, downsize the bait size and the hook size, and you can catch bluegill. Now you've got some variety to your catfish bait. As always, check your regulations because uh, these fish are not legal to use in some states. In most places, if you catch them on a rod and reel, you can use them as bait. But be sure to check your local laws to make sure you can use bluegill, sunfish, and brim wherever you're fishing at. Now this next bait is one I just started using last year. I fished for over 20 years chasing catfish and it was just last year that I started trying out chicken. And uh, chicken is an excellent readily available bait. You can get it pretty much in any grocery store. Uh, it's something that's in your freezer section. Now, there's a lot of different pieces of chicken to use. A lot of people you've probably seen use chicken livers. I'm gonna suggest that you stick with chicken breast and chicken thighs cut up into little chunks for a couple of reasons. The first reason is it's easy to cut these pieces of meat into bait-sized chunks. 
Liver is very slimy and flexible and it's hard to keep a hook in. So uh, I think you'll be much happier with using the breast and the thighs cut up into chunks than you will liver. And that brings me to the second point I'm not a big chicken liver fan is, well, keeping it on the hook is very, very difficult. There are all kinds of remedies and concoctions and tricks, but I think you're much better off using chicken breasts and chicken thighs over chicken liver and it's a very convenient and easy bait to use. Now these last two baits, I put them further down the list because they're excellent catfish bait. We'll catch fish anywhere in the country, but they're a little harder to come by. And the next one is skipjack. Skipjack are a herring that is in the Tennessee River chain of lakes and other watersheds west of the Appalachian Mountains. They are an excellent catfish bait. They're very oily. They vary in size. Uh, they're difficult to keep alive though. That's one of the downsides to them is that uh, these fish are not like shad or bluegill that you can put into a live well in a bait tank and keep them alive for very long. If you're planning to fish them live, you almost have to catch them uh, and put them back out live immediately afterwards. Uh, but they're a little easier in my opinion than the last bait to catch, but you can catch these things on rod and reel, just casting a little jig. Uh, a lot of times people will try two or three of these in uh, succession onto a leader. And uh, with a little bit of work, you can catch some of these fish. Uh, you can catch them from the bank. Uh, for years, people traveled out to the Tennessee River uh, to catch these things around the steam plants. That's harder to do now because of the lack of generation from these power plants. But they can still be caught in the tail race below many dams during certain times of the year. It takes a little more effort uh, to do that than it does bluegill and brim. Uh, so be prepared for that, but they're an excellent bait and they work outside of the Tennessee River. I've used them here uh, in the Carolinas where I fish and catfish will hit them, uh, no doubt about it. It seems to be sometimes uh, they are hit better than others and uh, they'll work pretty much anywhere in the country. If you happen to get some while you're out in Tennessee, you can take them back to pretty much anywhere in the country and fish will hit them. Uh, there's a lot of oil in them. There's a lot of scent with them and catfish love to eat them. Now the last bait is probably if I had to go anywhere in the country would be my go-to bait uh, and that's gizzard shad. But I rank it far down the list. It's a great bait, don't get me wrong. If you got a chance to fish with gizzard shad and use it, use it. It's a great bait. Uh, one of the premier catfish baits in the country. The downside to gizzard shad is you have to be able to throw a cast net to catch gizzard shad. Uh, and that can be difficult for some folks, whether you're fishing on a boat or from the bank. Uh, sometimes throwing a cast net can be tough. A lot of people are not comfortable with it. Uh, some people have physical restrictions to where they can't throw them real well. So getting gizzard shad is a little bit harder. Uh, once you take the time to learn how to throw a net, you don't need to throw a big, huge one. Uh, and you can catch these fish and you've got an excellent bait that will catch you fish anywhere in the country. Now, as always, check your regulations to make sure that it's legal to use them because there may be some places where using gizzard shad is not legal or transporting them from state to state may not be legal, so check all that out. Now, the good news is there are places that sell gizzard shad live. Uh, these places have massive tanks and they have these fish and you can buy them by a dozen. That's a great way to go. Uh, you can try to keep them alive or put them on ice until you can fish with them. Uh, I would stay away though from the places that, that sell frozen gizzard shad. Um, while the baits will work, uh, a lot of times these things are not frozen in a proper manner to keep them as tough as possible. They can be very mushy. I would put those frozen gizzard shad down as a last resort. And honestly, some of these frozen pickled baits that you see in some of the big chain stores, I would also shy away from. I think if you're going to use these baits, Gizzard Chad, uh, I, I think you need to either learn how to throw a cast net and catch them, or you need to find somewhere that you can buy them. Well, guys, these are my five big go-to catfish baits anywhere in the country. If you're starting out learning how to catch catfish, any of these baits will catch you catfish no matter where you go. So if you can get your hands on some of them, some are harder than others, you'll catch some fish. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good. <laughs>